tell me a little about yourself, Chris. <laughs> okay. Christopher Brown, graduate student at Cornell University, mm -hmm. uh, focused on real estate, investment, finance, okay. development, specifically hotels and resort. Okay. Um, president of the of the uh, Philip Payton Society for Minorities in Real Estate. Okay. You know, many DEI council at uh, the, the Cornell Real Estate Council, you know, strategic vice president yeah. for, for um, you know, geopolitical club and all, all that, all that. Right. But um, I, I, I was born in in Brooklyn. Okay. Very interesting uh, to Caribbean parents. Okay. Jamaica and Grenada. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, wife is Trinidadian. Great okay. great grandfather is Haitian. Wow. So have a mix of my goodness, Caribbean, yeah, North American, now whatever you want to say. Yeah, awesome, man. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And you've been in, you've been in uh, the states for how long? Your your whole life, or you? No, no. I left. I left the state at uh, at two years old. Okay. Uh, came back about. Whoa. Mm, well, off and on, I'm I'm in. You know, I'm in the states. Right, right. Well, I'll say maybe around 16, 17 years now in the in the states. Okay, okay. I, I, I'll say that. Okay. So, um, so then, so what did you? All right. So, take me to like high school. After high school, you graduated, and then what happened after that? <laughs> all right. Uh, so, well, let, let let me give you some interesting facts. Even before that, you'll 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 see this, and and be intrigued of this. So. Um, I got a scholarship to come to uh, New York, Brooklyn, from Grenada. Uh, on my way back, Hurricane Ivan happened. So okay. I was planning to go back down to Grenada. Hurricane right. Ivan ha happened. Total 86% of the entire infrastructure in Grenada. Wow. And the family was down there. And I, I don't know how my mom called. I, I, I mean, everything was total. Yeah. So Christopher... Um, you can't come back to Grenada. Um, find your way over here. <laughs> over here. Uh, there is a good college uh, around here in Brooklyn that mm -hmm. I, I make yourself handy. Okay. okay. I was like, what the heck? Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and she was referring to Brooklyn College, you know, and, and I went to Brooklyn College just okay. because of, of her, her request. Right. You know, ha had a love for natural science. So triple majored by chem math, did well there. Wow. Um, going into my junior year, I changed my major. I don't know. I, I just had, I really still felt that pain of Hurricane Ivan. I changed my major to finance and business. Everyone thought I was crazy. You know, president of the, of the, of the biology club, vice president of the chemistry club, oh. all my labs with the labs being used, had a, Pair tutoring compared to physiology, everyone yeah, thought, yeah. "What the heck is wrong?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. And I said, I, I said to myself and to others, I would rather help a nation in nine hours than one patient. And and that was my my personal thesis, and I went with that. Okay. I I, I had the opportunity to go to Switzerland. I raised twenty one thousand dollars to go to Switzerland in 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 in, in two weeks. Got okay. a scholarship to represent the U.S., but I still had to raise 21K. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Did, did, yeah. Yeah, crazy. Did that. <laughs> Came back, raised over like a million dollar of fund for students to get an international education. Joined the foundation, raised with them 2.35 million. And then I graduated from Brooklyn College. <laughs> so, so I, I had to. You do a little bit of everything. Fundraising. Yeah. Studying. Yeah, interning, working, yeah. and then you graduated. Wow. And then I graduated, and then my my first job from the foundation um, was working under a legendary wealth manager, um, Sam Beller. Okay. Um, under his wings, wealth management there. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. He he really I, I learned the fundamentals from him. Okay. And then uh, you know from there I was the strategic engagement uh, manager for health. Uh, a startup health firm um, did wonderful there as well. Engaging public-private partnerships there before it was a thing, okay. you, know, you know, did wonderful there. And then I joined the Caribbean American Chamber of Commerce as the economic development director. Did well there. Okay. Again, engaging with, with the prime ministers, the ministers, you know, the different ministries. And Dr. Roy Hastick, um, he, he's the late, well, he died um, from COVID. 
Ooh. Um, yeah. He said, Christopher, why don't you start up your own consulting firm? So I did that just again, <laughs> you know, out of his, I am, and yeah, out of just his, his request, I did that, did really well, you know, <laughs> really supporting Fortune 5 and 50 companies and, okay. and, and engaging with, with countries. All right. Well, so, so, so what else did you do and who else did you engage with? I'm, I'm waiting to hear that you were the president of Grenada at some point in your life. Like what else you got going on for us? No, 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 I'm, I'm, yeah. no not yet. <laughs> uh, again, you know, really my aim is to really to build a bridge. I, 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 I'm blessed to me to have the skill sets to really be able to make life easier for those that's okay. coming, you know, behind me. Okay. That's my whole thing, even with PPS. Okay. You know, I felt I will be judged if I didn't jump on board. Okay. So let me ask you this question. What you had your own consulting firm. Correct. How did you end up at Cornell? Because it's not like you were, <laughs> it's not like you didn't even need Cornell, man. It's not like you were already on the yeah. path to success, yeah. brother. So, so yes, yes. I was going to get my, straight up, I was going to get my PhD in economics. <laughs> so, so, so no, I, I'm for real. I, I so Within the time frame I did, so I, I did a master's in economics one year, yeah. knocked it out in one year doing work. And and I was a, I was going to get a PhD in economics. My wife was like, Christopher, <laughs> like, PhD in economics? Look at Cornell. Because I was advising companies, you know, regarding place, uh, you know, placemaking, more, more or less like a management consulting, but generational consulting. Mm, okay. So, so, cons so companies, again, this is every company right. that, 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 that has a Gen Z, Gen Y, um, well, millennial um, base. Okay. I would be the one re M and a, um, you know, restructuring place making psych work, psychology work. <laughs> Okay. I was wow, the, mate. Everything, dude. That's yeah. How you do it. <laughs> yeah, I was the one helping them to transition. Okay. Really extracting as much profit return okay. as possible for for companies and, and and ministries. Um. And wife, she was like, "This is not your personality." I'm like, "Well, this is the next step." As and and my getting a PhD. Yeah, in economics. Okay. That was that was my next. That was what I wanted to do. It almost sounds like it would have slowed you down, man. It's not like you were already done and. Oh, really? No. I mean, I, I think that one might, that might just put a bit of a more, a feather in my hat, you know, okay. you know, I, I had a master's, that was the next thing. But what's interesting is that all of my advising is, you can only do as much to advise, mm -hmm. only as much. Right. They can take, they, they can take your suggestions or not. Mm -hmm. Right. And most of my suggestions, you know, they, they should have taken, you know, <laughs> most, most take it, but, but the one that they didn't take, they should have, right, right, you know? Right. So I said, man, I, let me just do this on my own mm. to be candid. And, you know, wifey was just Christopher, this is, and I'm like, no, real estate. This is something like, no, come on. And th that, so it was, <laughs> it was only Columbia. And and Cornell, I, I I applied to, and I got into both, awesome. and 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 I picked Cornell. Awesome, you know that was really it. And my my wife is in real estate, as you know, did did her bar focus on real estate? So that was a, a power team. Oh wow! So your wife's in the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. She's on the yeah. legal side. On the legal side. Okay, cool, cool. That's correct. All That's right. correct. All right. So she kind of helped navigate you to the real estate side once she yeah, heard. Correct. You're gonna go off into PhD land. Yeah. Where you disappear for like five years and come back with a degree with a big beard as well. But it sounds like you pivoted or your wife helped you pivot into the yeah. commercial real estate industry. Right. That kind of just shows that, you know, right. that type of job or industry isn't as exposed as others, you know, education, government, legal, That's healthcare, correct. you know, um, those industries and those careers, everyone knows about them, but Real estate, I mean, besides the residential part, not no one really knows. And when I say no one, I mean like people of um, you know, diverse backgrounds, underrepresented backgrounds don't really have that 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 leeway or that exposure into the industry. That's one of the reasons why, you know, I started this platform, Ali's doing what he's doing, you know, Cornell's doing a good job yeah. with their program. Uh, and you're seeing you're starting to see different programs sprout out at different schools, but your introduction to the industry was your wife. That's correct. Absolutely okay. correct. I and and 
wonderful, wonderful take. I, I didn't know much about real estate at all. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny. Right. I, yeah. I didn't. I worked around it. You know, I, I had ambitions um, really to to own real estate, but not on the investment finance development level. Okay, right. That was, so, so getting into Cornell, I, man, all the technical skills that I needed, I, 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 I've received. So yeah. now I mentally, I'm in a whole different perspective before and after Cornell, just okay. because of the exposure that you talked about. Right, right. Okay, cool. So then you get into Cornell and then how, tell me about your experience at Cornell. Um, man, I, you know. Last semester, 22.5 credit. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, to be candid, I made it my own path. Okay. I made it my own path because I went, I was really focused in finance and investment. I, I tried to do as much finance and investment uh, subjects, courses as possible. So I beasted it up. Okay. You know, I, you know, so again, I have a family, two kids, a wife um in the industry so that made it a bit more challenging my 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 mother um it's interesting got diagnosed with a very uh, with a terminal illness that i had to okay. health proxy you know uh, you know with that and well technically i took 22.5 credits it was 21 point in you know point five in my master's that's insane i don't recommend anyone to do that yeah yeah Dude. again because it's just my thirst for for knowledge really understand the game you okay. know interact with hedge funds private equity firms private equity shops banks so i i really i really stepped out of my comfort zone a lot right. many conferences right. many right. many connections yeah you know really helped awesome and so you, you, you feel like cornell give you that leg up you were looking forward in the industry correct okay yeah. okay and then all right so then take me Take me through, okay, you're in Cornell. How did you hear, hear of uh, uh, the Philip Payton Society? How did you hear about them? Good, good question. So even before Cornell, I, I was thinking, I was making my decisions, you know, what school to pick. <laughs> and and Ali called up and said, hey, Christopher, um, I, I'm, I'm hearing that you you are accepted. I'm like, yeah. Sure. Okay. And she said, you know, th there is this cool organization I think you would, you know, you would appreciate it. And first call, I was like, ah, man, I had I, LA, no, I had <laughs> way too much things to do. <laughs> it sounds like. Yeah, I'm not, he, 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 he will tell you that. I'm like, you know, <laughs> nah, man, I am, yeah. yeah. So, no, take a look at it, you right. know. um, There is only one or two of us three max in the space. Mm -hmm. I, I think this will do you well. So right. I said, okay, let me take a look. And the the current executive board at that time you know um we, we had phone calls zoom calls and we connected okay. Okay. and I, I i jumped on board as a treasurer just absorbing um my 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 perception and my outlook was just to observe what was going on so yes you know um accounts you know balance that and you right. know you know different stuff treasure treasurers do right. Right. and but I was mainly observing what was happening okay. and how I could make it better. Right. And and the following year, I became president and I, I scaled the entire game vision. So before it was a student organization, really, you know, uh, just specifically to build Conradship um, with the current uh, matriculated students of, of color, uh, underrepresented minority, at Cornell, right, and to build long-lasting relationships afterwards, right, for sure. I, 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 I said to myself, "That's awesome, wonderful," but the industry needs to know that we exist, mm -hmm. uh, and, and and we're talented, you know, as such. Yeah. yeah. So I scaled the game vision. I said, you know, to the team, and it was two, three of us. I said, "Look, <laughs> now the aim is is to the vision is to become the preeminent student organization." That houses top minority talent in the nation. Ooh, that's that was, cold, brother. That's cold. That was that's it. Cold. Okay. You know, okay. highlighting, connecting, and ultimately transitioning underrepresented minority groups to to the industry. Everyone thought I was crazy. Like, what? What? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> 
We just want to be a guy. Yeah. I said, guy, just hold on. Just hold on. If you don't believe it yet, just hold on. Okay. So, so I built a, a team outside of, of the, of the commercial, you know, the concentrated commercial real estate program, because there was very few of us, you know, MBAs, uh, you know, I, I, I pulled up on urban planners. I pulled up on architects, designers, I put, you know, and, and we build a team of, of eight uh, and everyone got a strategic role. I, I thought of it like a body, you know, um, and, and every, every team member was a part of that human body. Again, that's me, natural sciences as, as well, yeah. you know, um, you know, so we, we, we had a, a, a VP of, <laughs> of branding culture uh, and kind of strategic engagement we had. So we really to augment what we're doing. Wow. And then, you know, during that point, uh, we had no product. Yes, we had a case study competition that was rolling out yeah. um, for four years. Well, well, four years now at the point, but it was only, you know, three, four HBCUs engaged. Mm -hmm. And I was a summer associate, a, a summer associate, sorry, at Lend Lease. And I pitched them the idea of, look, this is what we're gonna do, and I'm heading it. You know, I'm 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 the star uh, summer associate, and and I'm the one that's that's gonna be doing it. We didn't have a product. Yeah. We didn't have a product really, <laughs> but I, I I pitched it as that. Listen, yeah. you would yeah. be, you would be, front of mind. You would be the first entrant, you know, of this opportunity. Right. And Christopher, we believe in you. Ten grand, bang. I said okay. Woo, okay. Okay. Then JP Morgan, the same thing. Okay. And Blackstone, the same thing. Okay. So, so, so at that point, again, the momentum started boiling. Gensler. So, okay. man, from one or two sponsors to 15, we grew it to 650% sponsorship. Wow. You know, then, yeah, man, it was, it, Congratulations. I, I went in. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's obvious. And when Ali, you know, me and Ali have been talking for a while. We wanted to do something together because they're both from North Carolina a and And we actually thought what we were going to do was going to be at our school. Ooh. Now that the, the, uh, the pandemic, um, you know, uh, yeah. flushed that out. But in the interim, that didn't stop him or I from building our platforms. If anything, that gave us more time to really think about things and put our heart and joy or all of our effort into building these platforms. So obviously Ali, you know, scouring the talent pool that was coming in similar to what i do find individuals that you know we feel are stars and can really push the agenda forward this being a positive agenda for minorities and the commercial real estate industry yeah. um as well and so obviously him picking you and then you picking the folks that you guys that you picked it seems like it was a a team like the avengers that came together <laughs> my god the wonderful came together and you guys built this crazy yeah. platform yeah. and yeah. hosted this amazing event and got all these amazing sponsors yeah. and then you know me being on the outside you know i'm seeing what ali and and, and you guys and gals are doing over there at pps and i'm like oh wait I, I need to jump on that i need to be involved we need to get this on camera we need yeah. to get this so everyone can see and me and ali have already been talking about doing something like this for the past few years and then that's where i jump in we film everything, we shoot everything. I got my team editing everything now, and we're having these follow-up calls so that when people see not only the content and the case competition and the events, et cetera, they also get to meet the people behind the scenes like oh. you and up to the uh, Cornell folks. I'm talking to FAMU tomorrow. I got Spelman I'm going to talk to. I got AIDS. I got all the schools, Howard, oh, too, oh, that yeah. I'm going to touch base with. So everyone can not only just you know, be appreciative of the event and the case competition and the progress that um, PPS has made and, you know, your involvement and your your team's involvement, but also hear about those experiences because we all love documentaries. We all love behind the scenes. And that's why having these follow-up discussions are super important because uh, even though that, that event was amazing and it was, it was, um, it was, uh, it's going to be broadcasted soon, we need to know who Christopher Brown is. We need to know who the man was behind the plan. And that's why I want to jump on here with you to hear your story. Uh, you're, you're it, sounds like, kind. it sounds like this is another case, and this is actually a positive statement I'm gonna make. This is another case of a talented brother like yourself, not getting exposure until later on in life, right? Because you didn't have that growing up, which is fine. But when you got it, 
you've obviously taken it and you pretty much put it in a headlock and took off, man. And so, so buddy God. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I mean, I mean a little animated, love but love it, love it, but, love it. But that is the love emphasis it. I have to put on telling this story and sharing this your story and this interview with the rest of the world because, you know, sometimes I feel like people get or or uh, decision makers can get caught up in hiring kids and and through hiring people out of the, the programs, which is fine. But I want to highlight yourself because there are people who never had this exposure, who got in later on in the game. But once they get in, watch out. Yeah. yeah. Watch out. And yeah. you're one of those individuals. That's why I'm talking to you now. Yeah. And there are a lot of other individuals that you, myself, Ali, and you know, other organizations are going to bring through. And so I think the door is going to open pretty soon. And and this this content highlights that door opening. And look what we got: HBCUs coming on, presenting. We got events going on. We got people like Chris Brown, Ali, Niles Ray. Like these people are the next up. They are the next generation. So that's why I wanted to have you on here, man. Is there anything else you want to follow up with? How your experience is going? Um, are you are you have you graduated yet? And and if you have or are going to soon, um, what's your post uh, Cornell graduation? Uh, plans. Got it. Got it. Well, I, I, first of all, I have to tell you and say and express mm -hmm. thank you, Nas. You again, I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm a fan. That, I'm a fan. <laughs> Much appreciated. Yeah. Because what you're doing now. So I, for me, I have dedicated my 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 life to be the example. I never had a mentor. Straight up. Yes, I, I had Sam Beller, but not. <laughs> We're in camera, so I won't do that. But 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 he's he's not the same lived experience. Right, right, right. At all. Right. At all. So I really had to to graph my experience, you know, from many different individuals, you know, and and what you're doing is creating a platform to say, whoa, there is a brother, there's a sister that looks like me, have the same experiences like me, sure. and they're doing such and such. Sure. So, I, I mean, for me, on a, on a leadership background, I, I, I told the team, look, the aim is that once <laughs> you leave the team with me, your lives will never be the same. Sure. They know that. You can ask them that. Your lives will never be the same. Right. I will stretch you to your maximum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One, one of my teammates was like, yo, let's act for a thousand. A thousand? No, we're acting for 10. Matter of fact, <laughs> just because this is new, I'm asking for 10K. Right, right. You know, uh, you know, just told him to hold on. And, and all of them, you know, and, and that's fine. Yeah. And that's that's awesome because Cornell really created a laboratory for us to make mistakes. Mm. Shout out, shout out to Cornell, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, well done. Well, and and it's funny because their their jaw dropped as well when they heard, you know, they had to be believers as well. Oh, for sure. They had to be believers as well because they were like, "What is this?" I'm like, "Guys, just don't worry about." It. I, I've I've raised I've raised some monies before. Yeah. You know. So yeah. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I got it. I got it. So yeah. you know, and and you know, I I, I would I I think that from this opportunity so mm -hmm. from four student on that from four hbcus to 13 hbcus from a from a, a cash prize of five thousand to eleven thousand breach you know membership rose 233 percent um hbcu participation oh man listen what else so it's <laughs> what else keep going <laughs> so there is we already broke we are the largest HBCU um, case study competition HBCU model of its kind in the nation. Great. Yep. This yep. this one year, some you know even semester. So it's yeah. so the next move is really to highlight, um, connect, and ultimately transition top talent, top yeah. minority talent into the industry. It yeah. needs to be done. And I'm 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 happy. I felt I would be judged if I if I didn't get involved. You know, so that's Ali. I, I mean, I was I told Ali, you know, first and second round, bro. No, man. 
Right. This is not what I want to do. I'm in and out. And I'm like, no, right. Christopher. I, you know, again, it, it's it's the same. It's the same sense of responsibility that hit me when I changed my major. Mm, right. You know, I rather would it be helping a nation than one person as a neurosurgeon. Yes. It, it, it hit me again. I'm like, okay, okay, all right, all right, Christopher. <laughs> this is what you got to do. Right. You right. know. So, so um, what, what, what are your plans? What are your plans after? Okay, have you graduated yet? I have two weeks ago. Oh, congratulations, man! That's awesome. That's awesome, man. That's what's up. Awesome. Yeah. And so, what are your plans post graduation? Now, th- th- there's some things in the in the pipeline. Okay. You know, I plan to uh, try to take a rest, but you know, <laughs> rest is life. you take a rest. Uh, or yeah, you- that, it felt it felt odd. You know, so. Not sure yet. Um, you know, th- there's some plans being negotiated, but I haven't really firm up any. Nothing is is okay. is pen to paper yet. Okay. You know, so there's still opportunities that's presenting itself. Awesome, Chris. Well, I'm sure. I mean, you know, a gentleman like yourself, super talented. Um, you. you know, definitely like highlighting your story. It's similar to my story. Uh-huh. Um, you know, just catching on to the game later on in life, and then once you get a hold of it, not letting it go and just. Continue to keep it in a headlock, man, and until it says uncle or until it says I need air or it taps, right? So, you know, the industry is, is is tapping, man, and you know, keep on holding on to that and 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 get the opportunity that best fits you, your personality. Um, and you know, commercial real estate is all about relationships and a lot of other things, but definitely big on relationships. And I feel like you're the individual, obviously, through this this platform. This platform has done a lot for you because it's allowed you to showcase you know, your uh, ability to facilitate, bring others together, lead, fundraise. And dude, that's all what commercial real estate really is about. We all need producers, you know, deal sourcers, et cetera, uh, as, as well as um, facilitators within the industry and great networkers. So, you know, now that this is in a bag, and mind you, you already have a stellar resume. You've already have a bunch of experience you could talk about, but I feel like you took all your experience, put it into this platform and just lifted it up. Yeah. And it's something that's going to really going to, you know, reign supreme and resonate with individuals in the industry. And I'm, I'm sure you're going to land at a, a great, a great spot. Um, and, and you, you know, you got next, bro. You and, you know, the others on your, I talked to other Cornelians, uh, Christian, uh, Alex, uh, Ari, uh, patience. I mean, y'all got next. Simple as that. Y'all got next. And this platform helps highlight you all. And then, you know, me coming and in, getting involved, this video content, which everyone's consuming. So now people can see the people behind the scenes, which is what I love to do, um, highlight others. And so, no, I think, I think, I think you have a bright future. And one reason why I want to get your story again is because I want to show folks that look, Yes, there's high school kids that we need to get in this game. There's college kids coming out that you need to get to. But look, there are some experienced professionals that have a lot of great talent. You can bring them in, start them as a senior analyst, start them as an associate, whatever. That only lasts for a few years. But the, the amount of, of, uh, of uh, potential that they have, as well as where they can take your firm, look what they did. Look, look what they did with that. That group. That just had HBCU case competitions. Look what they did with that. Imagine what they'll do with your projects. Imagine what they do with your 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 fundraising imagine, or your capital raises. Uh, imagine what they do, which is you know deal sourcing or basics modeling. Like the the point is hiring talented individuals. If they're 22, they're 22, 32, 42, whatever the age doesn't matter. Get that talent, and a lot of it, a lot of your uh, uh, more experienced professionals that are diverse probably gonna be a little older. So I always tell people that there are some gems out there. And Chris, you are one of those gems, brother. So I appreciate it, brother. I'm gonna get off my high horse. I'm rambling, but I'm really, I'm so, so proud of you, man. I'm so proud of what you've done and how you elevated um, um, the Philip Payton Society platform. Uh, it, not only is it the best HBCU, maybe the only HBCU case competition, but I would argue, dude, because I did MIT's case competition when I was in school. It wasn't like what y'all had. It wasn't like what you guys were presenting, man. So I would argue that it might be one of the best case competitions for real estate in the land. Um, and I would even put up against other case competitions for for the small team that you guys had, for the uh, the, the small the 
lack of experience as far as time that this has been going on for you. It's only been going on for like a few years. Not like you have to do and, it's, and it's student led. It's student led. Student led. Exactly. Exactly. You know, versus administrative led. It's right. Student right. Led. Right. So anyway, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up, man. But if there's any last words that you have to say to the people out there, um, to other students that may be interested in participating in the competition, maybe interested in going to Cornell or or diverse folks that are looking to get into the industry, do you have any words for them? Ah, uh, man, I'll say follow your dreams. It's never too late. Yeah. It's it's if you have a passion to do something, right, my friend, you do it. Right. do it we only have a limited amount of time on this earth so maximize it max yeah there you yeah. go and the best place for people to reach you if they want to directly would probably be linkedin linkedin is, is okay. best. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah that's that's fine that's it right there so all right chris well thank you so much for uh joining me on my platform dcre tv um we'll get us out to the folks soon um and you know i'm always here to support you let me know if you need anything in your career or in the future thank you Thank you for your time. All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. See you. See you later. Thank you for your time. All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. See you later. See you later.